beautiful people, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Cinematic Black Facts with your girl Lucy G. This is a quick look into black people and other people of color in the cinematic history you never learned. Thanks, Simone. And if you know, you know. <laughs> now, I hope you all had a wonderful week, but let's dive into this week's person, shall we? A perfect way to end Black History Month than with a civil rights activist who stood hand in hand with Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, and many other people even read the eulogy at Malcolm X's funeral. He was an actor, producer, director, and had a wonderful partnership with his beautiful wife, who those two ended up working together more than not. Now, if you haven't figured out who this is by now, that's okay, that's why I'm here. That's right, this week we are talking about the one and only O.C. Davis. Now, let's learn a little bit more about Mr. O.C. Davis, shall we? Born Radford Chapman Davis in Cockdale, Georgia, the son of Kenise Charles Davis, a railway construction engineer, and his wife Laura. He inadvertently became known as Aussie when his birth certificate was being filed and his mother's pronunciation of his name as R.C. Davis was misheard by the courthouse clerk in Clitch County, Georgia. Growing up as a black man in Georgia was not easy and Davis experienced racism from an early age when the KKK threatened to shoot his father, whose job they felt was too advanced for a black man to have. Following the wishes of his parents, he attended Howard University but dropped out in 1939 to fulfill his desire for an acting career in New York after a recommendation by Alan Locke. He later attended Columbia University School of General Studies. His acting career began in 1939 with the Rose McLend Players in Harlem. However, soon the next World War broke out and Davis wanted to serve. During World War II, Davis served in the United States Army in the Medical Corps. In 1948, Davis married actress Ruby Dee, whom he had met on the set of Robert Adry's 1946 play Jeb. Soon later, Davis made his film debut in 1950 in the Sidney Poitier film No Way Out. When Davis wanted to pursue a career in acting, he ran into the usual roadblocks that black people suffered at the time as they generally could only portray stereotypical characters such as the maid, the slave, the driver, etc. Instead, he tried to follow the examples of Sidney Poitier and play more distinguished characters. When he found it necessary to play a Pullman, Porter, or a butler, he played those characters realistically, not as a character. Davis and his wife Dee were well known as civil rights activists during the civil rights movement and were close friends of Malcolm X, Jesse Jackson, Martin Luther King, and other icons of the era. They were involved in organizing the 1963 Civil Rights March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom and served as the MCs. Davis, alongside Ahmed Osam, delivered the eulogy at the funeral of Malcolm X. He had reread part of the eulogy at the end of Spike Lee's film Malcolm X. He also delivered a stirring tribute to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. at the memorial in New York Central Park the day after King was assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee. In addition to acting, Davis was one of the most notable black directors of his generation. He directed movies such as Gordon's War, Black Girl, and Cotton Comes to Harlem. Along with Bill Cosby, Poitier, Davis was one of the handful of black actors able to find commercial success while avoiding stereotypical roles prior to the 1970s, which also included a significant role in the 1965 movie The Hill alongside Sean Connery, plus roles in The Cardinal and The Scalp Hunters. However, Davis never had the tremendous commercial or critical success that Cosby Cosby and Poitier enjoyed. As a playwright, Davis wrote Paul Robinson, All-American, which is frequently performed in theater programs for young audiences. Davis found recognition late in his life by working in several of director Spike Lee's films, including Do the Right Thing, Jungle Fever, She Hate Me, and Get on the Bus. He also found work as a commercial voiceover artist and served as the narrator of the early 1990s CBS sitcom Evening Shade, starring Burt Reynolds, where he also played one of the residents of a small southern town. He also voiced a Anansi, the spider on the PBS Child's television series Sesame Street and its animation segment. Davis's last role was a several episode guest star on the Showtime drama series The L Word as a father struggling with the acceptance of his daughter, Bette, parenting a child with her lesbian partner. In his final episodes, his character was taken ill and died. His wife Ruby Dee was present during the filming of his own death scene. That episode, which aired shortly after Davis's own death, aired with a dedication to the actor. In 1989, Aussie Davis and his wife Ruby D were named to the NAACP Image Awards Hall of Fame, and in 1995, they were awarded the National Medal of Honors, the nation's highest honor conferred to an individual artist on behalf of the country and presented in the White House ceremony by the President of the United States. In 2004, they were recipients of the prestigious Kennedy Center Honors. In 1994, Davis was included into the American Theater Hall of Fame. In the mid-1960s, 
Ruby D and Aussie Davis moved to the New York suburb of New Rochelle, where they remained for their entire lives. Their sons, Guy Davis, is a blues musician and former actor who appeared in the film Beat Street, 1984, and daytime soap opera, One Life to Live. Their daughters are Nora Davis Day and Hassan Muhammad. O.C. Davis and Ruby Dee were two of the biggest figureheads in the black community, if I ever knew any. They were partnership goals and even gave Will and Jada the idea of an open relationship, even though O.C. and Ruby said, that ain't gonna work for us. Mm. But with all that being said, Mr. O.C. Davis, we here on Cinematic Black Facts honor you, we salute you, we appreciate you, we respect you, but most importantly, we thank you for everything you did for the black community and everything you did to pave the way for actors such as me. Now, with all that being said, let me know who you want to see next on Cinematic Black Facts with your girl. Remember, I don't bite. Just type it in the comments. It's not going to hurt you. If you made it this far, you can type a name. I hope everyone has a wonderful week. Let's have a fun weekend. And that is a cut. I think that is a print. And I think that is a slate. And that is a wrap on Cinematic Black Facts this week. I will talk to y'all later. Bye.